to Tuesday How-To Days at Lawrence Country Cottage. My name is Lisa and today I'm going to help you learn what to do with cork. I would love for you to comment, let us know where you are so that we can keep in touch. I see that my mom is logged in. Hi mom. Sharon, I saw your post, good to see you. I hope some of my bag ladies, that's an endearing term by the way, are watching the video because I've got some interesting stuff to show you today. First, let's, let me tell you a bit about cork. Cork mostly comes from Spain and Portugal. Um, our suppliers get their cork from Portugal. So if you get cork at Lord's Country Cottage, it has come all the way from Portugal. Cork grows on a tree and it's a kind of oak tree. Cork trees are planted and they can't be harvested for 20 years. And once they start to harvest the trees, they are only able to harvest every nine years. An interesting little tidbit about cork trees is there's a very fine membrane between the core of the tree and the bark that protects it from fire. And as Spain and Portugal are susceptible to forest fires, if there is a forest fire, the cork trees don't die. They're um, very sustainable. Once the cork is harvested, it is soaked in water, then it is laid flat and compressed to dry. And once it's compressed and dry, they shave off very thin layers and apply a fabric back, and that's where we get our cork. Cork trees live till they're approximately 200 years old, and a mature cork tree, which is around 80 years old, produces 400 pounds of cork when it's harvested. Here at Lori's Country Cottage, we have two different kinds of cork in the store. We have fabric-backed cork, which is the cork you see behind me. So you can see it's got some structure to it. And we also have nylon-backed cork. It's as thin as paper. Most people think that you can only make bags out of cork, but today I'm gonna show you how we can use this nylon-backed cork in our quilting. So, how are both of the corks the same? Both of the corks are UV protected, they're water resistant, and easy to clean. The best thing about cork is that it has a finished edge when cut. So you can cut with your rotary cutter or your scissors and you don't need to finish that edge. That's really nice for bag making and for crafting. Let me show you First, some projects made with the fabric back cork. That's the cork behind me, here. Look at the fabulous prints and amazing colors. And our brand new, never seen before, sit down Brenda, Brenda W, Laurie A, Connie A, I don't want you to hurt yourself when you fall over. These are corks overlaid of different fabrics. So you can see the cork overlaid on burlap, on vinyl, and my personal favorite, on denim. When this came in, I just knew I had to make a bag out of the denim cork and the Got the Blues fabric. It is amazing. I absolutely love it. Here are some other projects I've made with cork. Most often you don't see an entire bag made out of cork because cork is kind of pricey. We tend to combine it with cotton in our projects. So we use cork as the accent. So this is half cork, half cotton, half cork, half cotton, 
and the same with this. So a small piece of cork can still make a fabulous bank because you use it as an accent. So that's fabric backed cork. Now all you quilters have been waiting for me to talk about the nylon backed cork because that's where we can use it for crafting and quilting. So I'll remind you that the nylon backed cork is thin and it differs from the fabric back cork in that we can iron this front and back with steam. And it works exactly the same as cotton for both quilting and bag making. So if you are using this for a bag and it asks for soft and stable or fusible fleece, you would fuse your fleece right to it like you would if it was cotton. But the thing I'm most excited about is I chose to use the nylon back cork for our Northcott Challenge blocks. Northcott is sending you, and so is Lori's Country Cottage, every morning for 24 days, a free block pattern. It, its idea was to have you make the block in two fabrics, but I wanted to show you how the cork looks with some different fabrics. These are the first five blocks in the challenge. And I can't wait to see how this turns out in the end. Other things you can make with the fabric backed cork are wallets, Here I have my next wallet already picked out. Our cork basket is made out of the fabric backed cork. And this pattern includes a zipper top if you like to have it zippered. In order to work with cork, you need a few special tools. Cork cannot be pinned through because the pins leave holes. When I started sewing with cork, I used a top stitch 14 needle just because I felt I was going through thicker layers so I should have a longer eye and that worked just fabulous. And then Schmetz came out with their super non-stick needles and bag makers started talking about how nice it is to sew with leather and cork with the non-stick needles and they're right. I use the super non-stick needles now when working with cork. And by the way, if you do any applique with fusible backings, it works great for applique. Because we can't pin, we need other tools. So of course, your wonder clips work fabulous just for clipping your two pieces together and moving from your working surface to your sewing machine. Another product that I use when working with cork are our sew tight magnets. And they're so tight I can't get them open. There's a back and a front and they snap and hold your cork together. So they come in different sizes and different shapes. This is the multi-pack or there's a pack that just has the rectangle shapes in too. These also work really good for applique. For those of you who like to use the Wonder Tape for zippers, you can't use Wonder Tape with cork. So I've done some experimenting with glue and the Acorn Precision Glue is the only glue I found that actually holds two pieces of cork right sides together. Because cork is non-porous, other glues don't work. So those are the simple tools you need for working with cork. What else can you do with cork? Cork is great for crafting. Of course there's bags, there's wallets. I've used the nylon back cork to make a Dresden for a cushion. You can use cork for applique because you can cut and have those raw edges. You can cut out your shapes. And you can use every scrap. Here's a key fob from Lazy Girl Designs. You can make bookmarks Here's the corky wallet, a passport cover, and raw edges just means you line up your pieces and top stitch.
Cork is all, also fabulous for embroidery. Laura's got her, kish, her cushion top and she has embroidered the letters on cork. And if you have an electronic cutting machine for fabric, like the Cricut Maker, you can cut cork with your Cricut Maker. Let me show you now. Here's hoping it doesn't all fall. This is our nylon back cork. Look at those fabulous prints. These are an economical way for you to try cork. One of these packages will easily make a wallet and you'll have some leftover. Then you see we've taken our big rolls of fabric back cork and cut them to smaller pieces in case you are making wallets or craft projects like our woven basket and our woven end box on the front table. If you're interested in purchasing cork from Lori's Country Cottage, some of our cork is online and we're just in the process of putting our brand new cork on the website. So watch for that in the next couple days. Or if you saw something you liked, you know you can always phone the store and we'll fill an order for you. I hope you enjoyed my presentation on how to sew with cork. Tomorrow is hump day Wednesday where we choose some special items in the store and we put them on sale. There are a limited number of these special items in the store. There are no special orders and the best way to get it is to phone the store. First call, first serve. Thank you for joining us at Lori's Country Cottage.